Good evening. Welcome to Good Shepherd as we uh, celebrate God's grace. Uh, thanks for joining us here, here at 195 Nestler Home. And thanks for joining us online right now as you're watching wherever you may be. Uh, God is good and gracious. Today is actually the last weekend of the church year. Uh, sometimes we call this the weekend or the Sunday of the fulfillment where we recognize that uh, Jesus Christ has fulfilled all the expectations that we need as he died and rose again, but he's coming back. And that will be the culmination of time. But today is the last weekend of the church year. Next weekend begins a whole new year, and I am looking forward to that. But uh, we have a lot to celebrate right now. So next Sunday, next weekend, will be the first Sunday in Advent and everything with that, uh, what comes with that, with the expectation, the preparation for the coming of Jesus. And yet we know that the, the child Jesus has already been born and lived and died and rose and is coming back. So as we uh, look ahead to next week with Advent, we're really just talking about the fact that uh, Jesus is coming into our hearts even this day. So thanks for everyone that's participated in this giving experience uh, for the TLC Crisis Pregnancy Center. Before worship this morning, we had 2,000 diapers. So wow, we're way past that. And who knows, by tomorrow afternoon, uh, who knows, we may have 5,000 diapers. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Again, as we celebrate God's grace, we, we uh, recognize that time is moving on. And in our gospel lesson, we hear of uh, the return of the king and the separation of the sheep and the goats. And where the righteous will hear these words uh, as the king uh, gives them honor for receiving that gift of grace. So I pray that even tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, your faith would grow and you would come to know the blessings that God has given you so that we can live lives faithfully trusting in the hope that we have in Jesus Christ to hear those words of the Savior, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's go ahead and stand, please, as we begin our worship, celebrating God's presence in our life. And we begin in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is my light to my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Therefore, since we have this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. The Lord is my light to my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. You may be seated now for the opening hymn.
Please stand now as we come before a faithful, loving God to confess our sins and receive his gracious forgiveness. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ. And by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We sing. Thine the amen, thine the praise, hallelujah's angels raise. Thine the everlasting head, thine the breaking of the bread. Thine the glory, thine the story, thine the harvest and the cup. Thine the vineyard, then the cup is lifted up, lifted up. Thine the life eternally, thine the promise that there be. Thine the vision, thine the tree. All the earth unbended knee, gone the nailing, gone the railing, gone the pleading, gone the cry, gone the sighing, gone the dying, what was lost lifted high. Thine the glory in the night, no more dying, only light. Thine the river, thine the tree, then the Lamb eternally, then the holy, holy, holy celebration jubilee. Thine the splendor, thine the brightness, only thee, only thee. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you care for all people regardless of their wealth or heritage, and you have made us heirs of your salvation. Strengthen us that we care for the poor, weak, and lonely, and that all our neighbors may know your gracious love through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for our first reading. Our New Testament today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 28. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he delivers the kingdom to God the Father, after destroying every rule and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. For God has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when it says, all things are put in subjection, it is plain that he has accepted who put all things in subjection under him. When all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself will also be subjected to him who put all things in subjection under him, that God may be all in all. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he will place the sheep on his right, but the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Truly, I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Since you and I have already been blessed to receive the inheritance of the kingdom in baptism by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can proclaim our gift of faith. Tonight we'll use the words of the Nicene Creed as we confess together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated now for the sermon hymn.
Would you pray with me? Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your grace. And as you have given us many, many blessings, material blessings, temporal blessings, today we give you thanks for the eternal blessings that you give us through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we have graciously, gracefully received these these gifts, may we, by the same grace, share these gifts with others. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, God's word I share with you. From the parable that we just heard is the gospel reading, uh, as Jesus is sharing again this last week of his life before he goes to the cross, as he shares this parable of the sheep and the uh, goats, uh, as he speaks to the righteous, Jesus the King says these words, then the King will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. This is our text. God's grace, God's mercy, his peace is yours today because you have inherited the kingdom of God. Amen. Well, uh, today, as I said, this is the last weekend of the church year. The, the Sunday, the weekend of the fulfillment, uh, where we look to have all those promises that Jesus shared fulfilled in Jesus. And the reality is, I don't want to jump too far ahead but they have already been fulfilled on the cross when Jesus said, it is finished. You have already received the inheritance that we hear talked about when the king shares those words with the righteous and the unrighteous. But this is the last Sunday of the church year. We recognize that time is moving on uh, in a timely human sense and in an eternal sense too. Again, next week is Advent and again we Look ahead to the coming of the king, born in a manger, and yet we realize that Jesus has always uh, already been born. He's reigning and ruling in our hearts this day. So when we talk about Advent and preparation, we're really talking about our own hearts, that the Holy Spirit would work in our hearts to prepare for the coming of Jesus Christ in our lives today. For our gospel text, though, uh, today's gospel is this uh, story of the sheep and the goats, the parable of the sheep and the goats. And I'll be frank with you, growing up, I always had a heartache with this parable growing up because in this uh, parable, the the goats are the unrighteous and the sheep are the righteous. The goats are the bad guys and the sheep are the good guys. Uh, I grew up on a farm and we had dairy goats. (laughs) We had dairy goats. I grew up with a lot of goats, hogs, cattle, sheep, all that kind of thing. But goats were something that we really preferred on where growing up. Matter of fact, as I grew up, we only had one sheep, one, my entire lifetime. And it was one of the stupidest animals we had. If we wanted to go, and if you notice in this picture here, you look at this picture and the goats are alert. They're looking at the camera. Uh, The sheep have their heads down. They're just, no, 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 no. If we wanted to see sheep, we went to visit Aunt Mary. Matter of fact, we would go to visit Aunt Mary from time to time, and we would take her a goat because, frankly, she needed a goat to lead the sheep. If there's a flock of sheep, but there's one goat in that flock, the goat will be the leader. That's just the way it is. 
And she lived in this place with all these hills and hollers and everything. And she needed a goat to make sure that the goat led the sheep out in the morning, but more importantly, back at night. And so if you have a good leader, hey, that's great. Uh, If the leader is not so great, then the sheep can be in trouble. That's kind of an image in my life, right? We are the sheep. That's who we are because we follow the shepherd. But sometimes we get distracted and we follow the goat. (laughs) We follow the world, right? And we listen to the world and say, yeah, that looks like we should follow that direction. Or we hear the whispers of the devil and we hear the deception and say, yeah, that makes sense. Your deception makes sense to me, devil. And we submit. But we don't need the world. We don't need the devil because my own sinful flesh is all too ready to lead me astray. I don't need the devil. I don't need the world because in my sinful flesh I will be led astray. Well, again, in this uh, parable, we try to identify who we are in this, right? Are we the sheep? Are we the goats? Who's the king and all this stuff? The reality is this parable is not about the sheep or the goats. This parable is about the shepherd. That's who this parable is all about that you and I have been claimed by the shepherd. This parable is not about what we do or we don't do. It's about what Jesus Christ has already completed and continues to work in your heart. As we said, this is the weekend of the fulfillment, the Sunday of the fulfillment, actually, technically. But again, Jesus has already fulfilled his promises for you. So as we hear this parable uh, I don't want you to hear this with any anxiety as in, oh, am I, am I going to be judged with the sheep or am I going to be judged with the goats? You have already received the inheritance in Jesus Christ. Well, the interesting thing as I see this uh, is that the response of both the faithful and the unfaithful, when the king comes back, they have this same response when he asks them the questions about being poor or hungry. Uh, they both hear these words. Uh, they s- both say these words. Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? Uh, when did we see you this way? You know, when did we see you hungry and thirsty? When did we see you in need? Uh, when did we see you as a stranger and we needed to, to visit you or needed clothes or in prison or sick? And as we hear these words, for me, it kind of puts a burden on me frankly and it should uh, because it's like are, are we looking for these opportunities have we ever done enough there's so many opportunities i mean i thank you so much for those of you that have shared these uh, uh items with the tlc crisis pregnancy center with the with the uh, diapers today and the formula that's awesome and with the canned goods and cereal but there's just so much need out there right i drive by and i see a guy and it's like Do I have something to provide? Am I driving by? Am I showing enough care and concern? Uh, It seems like the needs outweigh my ability. And I don't know about you, but sometimes, again, that puts a burden on me. See, I, I think even Christians should have a healthy burden to know that we're not doing enough. We should recognize that we should be called to do enough. But uh, here's a difference maker I'm going to talk about. I'm going to show you a picture. Believe it or not, this is a Buick. (laughs) This is an 06 uh, uh, Buick Century Station Wagon. It's the car that I bought when I first moved to Flint, Michigan, which was when I received the call 20 years ago uh, to Flint, Michigan, home of GM, home of Buick City. Uh, I had a Ford van. And that was serving us well when we were at the seminary, when I could walk to class. But when I took my first call to Flint, we, knew we needed another vehicle. You know, we just were not going to be able to make it. And I knew I was going to drive a Buick in Buick City. I was not going to drive an import. I was not going to buy any Ford or Dodge. I was going to buy a Buick. But this was our car, an 06 Buick Century station wagon. Served us well for many years. You know, you got that back seat with the kids facing backwards. How many of you grew up with a station wagon? Anybody? Yeah. Don't make them anymore, right? But this was a classic right here. 
Well, I remember about 20 years ago, almost to the day, it was in the November of 2000, and I was heading from Flint, Michigan, which if you take it, your map of Michigan, is down here by the thumb, and I was heading up to Traverse City, which is the tip of your little finger. That's about a 200-mile trip, going to a pastor's conference, and it was November in Michigan, in northwest Michigan, and it always snows up there. Well, anyway, I got up there, going to the pastor's conference on my way, and I just got past Cadillac, Michigan, which is way up north. And uh, frankly, I hear this, pow! And uh, my engine in my 06 Buick Century station wagon was done. I'd only had it for about six months. I bought it used, had 60,000 miles, but that was pretty new for me. Fortunately, I had invested in a AAA gold card, so that in invited me to have a 100-mile tow for no extra charge, and just for a few pennies a mile, I could get towed all the way back to Flint, Michigan. I had a, a pastor friend who had a brother who was a mechanic, and he was going to cut me a sweet deal, and he did. For only $1,900, I was going to get a new engine for this Buick Century station wagon. Sad news was, though, I didn't have $1,900, and that was a great deal. I just finished up seminary. I was still paying off my student loans for the seminary. Uh, you know, we were just had finally signed for a house and, you know, just didn't have the money. We limped through that week and on that weekend when I made it into church, you know, we had these mailboxes, kind of mail slots. And I had one too just with all the other members. And I went to, to get my, all my mail that I would receive as being a member of the congregation. And then there was an envelope with $1,900. And a little note to the pastor. Nobody's name. I never really knew who it was from. But when I saw that gift, I cried. Because like I said, we didn't have the $1,900. But now we did. And it was a blessing. And in some regards, I'm glad I didn't really exactly know who it was that gave me that gift. And I'm pretty sure it was a bunch of people. So I could always look at the people in the congregation and say, you know what? Maybe it was you. That gift changed me. Because I knew I had a need that had been met by some gracious people. And I started living out a different kind of stewardship life because I knew I had needs that God had met through his people. But as I look to see other people in need, I say, you know what? God has blessed me. I can be a blessing to those other people. However little that may be, however insignificant it may be, however you know, limited it may be. Because the reality is, for me, this gift made all the difference. I became less stingy. I became more gracious. I became more giving. And I grew up a fam with a family that was very gracious and giving because my parents, as I've mentioned, they were raised dirt poor. Dirt, dirt, dirt poor. And yet they were all gracious. When I experienced that same kind of lifestyle, recognizing that I'd been blessed, my life was different. And I, I pray that that could be what we hear even in these words, when the Master Jesus shares these words, then the King will say to those on His right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. And as He shares these words, both with the righteous people, He shares these words to the righteous people, said, Hey, Lord, when, when did we see you? Poor, needy, hungry, in prison, sick. When did we see you looking like that? They don't really recall at all. And Jesus shares these words. The king says, hey, truly, I say to you, as you did it to one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Brothers and sisters, we, we've been blessed materially. You know, here we, this is, this is a thousand dollars worth of stuff right here. That's awesome. And that's because we've been motivated, inspired to help our neighbor. And that's a good thing. But the reality is, even this pile of material blessings does not compare to the eternal blessings that you have in Jesus Christ. 
the internal blessing that we received in baptism, the eternal blessing that we will receive new and fresh again tonight as we receive the very body and blood of our Lord for the forgiveness of our sins, we will experience a taste of heaven, truly and literally a taste of heaven. We will be in a mysterious way in union and fellowship with Jesus Christ, the King, and all His faithful believers who are singing holy, holy, holy right now. That makes us different. That changes who we are. Again, the focus is not on what we do. Are we giving enough? Are we helping people enough? The answer is no, you're not. I'm not. I'm not gracious enough with the blessings that God has given me. I am not looking for those opportunities like I need to. That is just the truth. But the truth is also that I have been giving much more of that gift for the forgiveness for not doing those things that God's called me to do because it's not what I'm doing it's not about what you're doing. It's about what Jesus is doing in your life even this day. He says to you, come, you who are blessed by my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Before time began, God had already set aside your inheritance in heaven. God had already set aside His plan of salvation for you in Jesus Christ and in your baptism to receive that. And even as God may call you home quickly or He comes quickly, Lord Jesus, that place in heaven for you, before time began, you already received the gift. Again, my heart was changed when I got that measly $1,900 to fix my 1996 Buick Century station wagon. That highly, highly, highly gracious gift doesn't even begin to the, compare to that inheritance of that gift that you have this day. I pray that that gift that God has given you would change you in such a way that when somebody needs diapers or formula, you're, you're, you're fighting to be the one that helps. I'm so thankful that we have such a gracious, giving, generous congregation with the canned goods and the cereals and the diapers. But even more so, I pray that you would be gracious to share that eternal gift, the inheritance of the love of Jesus Christ that even now brings us hope. And now may this gift bring you peace. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this gift of eternal life and salvation that you give us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray even now, Lord God, that as you have given us this great inheritance, that we would be so faithful to share the blessings that you give us with others, earthly blessings easily, and even more easily, the eternal blessings that you give us. Send us your Holy Spirit and guide us, we pray, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Again, God is good and He is gracious. Uh, this is also Commitment Sunday. I'm going to ask this favor as we prepare our hearts, as we th say thanks to God for the blessings that He has given us. Um, we've invited you to bring your commitment cards forward this weekend. So as you may come forward here for communion, uh, you can place those in that, this uh, box of Ford here if you've been able to bring those. If you weren't able to, to bring those tonight, God bless you. I pray that you would faithfully and prayerfully consider, again, the, the, the material blessing, the eternal blessings that God has given you, and to see what part that you can play in the kingdom work here in heaven. And you can either mail that in or bring that back in at, at a later time. But at this time, we're just going to say thank you to God as we uh, meditate just a moment of prayer. Let's pray.
Again, as we prepare our hearts to receive the Lord's Supper, as we prepare to come forward here with those commitment cards, I would ask that we would uh, bow our hearts and minds even now as we stand to pray a prayer of commitment to our Lord. Lord, Heavenly Father, we recognize that we have not always been faithful to seek the treasure of your mercy purchased through your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us, we pray, for not seeking the gift of your mercy. Forgive us also for wasting the earthly gifts and and not using them to extend your kingdom here on earth and for eternity as you have called us to do. Send us your Holy Spirit, we pray, so that we would be more faithful in our Christian walk as we manage the resources that you've given to us. Enable us by your grace to make more effective use of the gifts that you've given. Lead us to be more faithful managers of our time, our life our blessings. Lead us to be more thankful to you and more generous to others. And may the promises that we make today, that we faithfully make under your grace, may be commitments in response to your commitment to each one of us to redeem us through the life and death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Use each one of us for your purpose, Lord God. Send us your Holy Spirit to enable us to live as your children this day trusting in the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ, speaking your truth and love to others. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We now come to the Lord in a moment of prayer. Let's bend our hearts to God. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we do thank and praise you for the blessings of new life in Christ. We thank you that even now in the midst of this pandemic that you are providing healing and protection. But Lord, we ask that you would continue to provide healing. Be with the healthcare workers, Lord, that are uh, dealing with this situation. Especially, Lord, we pray that you would be with those who are struggling with COVID. We're thinking of Brendan, who was involved in a car accident, and in the midst of that car accident was tested positive. So watch over Brendan and Lynn, we pray. But we also pray a special prayer of healing for Samantha. She has special needs, and we just pray that you would answer these prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, for the elderly and the homebound, Uh, For those that are dealing with long-term illnesses, Lord, we ask for your healing, especially those who are dealing with cancer, Lord. uh, We beg for your healing, Lord God. Uh, We just pray that you would continue to to give courage and, and faithfulness to the family members who support them. And together, may they all be witnesses of the inheritance of your grace that you have provided us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord God, we pray that you would be with the family of Tom Foster, who in your wisdom you brought home to eternal rest. Lord, we pray that uh, the hope of the resurrection, the promise of Jesus Christ, would uh, give hope to the uh, family who mourns his loss. May we even bear witness even now to trust in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All these prayers and petitions, Lord, we bring to you because we trust in the gift of your grace through Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We now continue as we prepare to receive the uh, sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Uh, The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection kept the Father's promise and granted true peace to all who put their trust in him. We sing. His power and His glory Fill earth and heaven with light His mercy full endeavor Invokes our praising Christ For we will dwell forever With Him then we arise Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. 
In the same manner also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Just do as often as you drink it in remembrance, in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, our faithful Master, O Christ, the Lamb of God, your grace heals each disaster throughout the world abroad. The day of Christ is nearing, he's standing at the gate. In mercy send your cheering as we keep watch and wait. Say 
based on and solid based. It is the strength of heart and spirit, the covenant of hope and grace. Lord, may thy body and thy blood be for my soul the highest good. And now may this, the holy body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may it strengthen you in the true faith and to life everlasting. Amen. Let's stand now to receive the blessing of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you on, with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. You may be seated for the closing song.
the Lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drums, all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king. Amen. And we are, when we sing that crown him with many crowns, we're really singing about that crown of righteousness that we have received in baptism, that we will turn back over to him as we come into the presence of the king at the end of times. Hey, thank you so much for those of you that were able to bring your commitment forms forward. Thank you for those of you at home. Uh, if you would like to, or if you didn't bring it today, you can mail those in or bring those directly uh, just into the church. We'll have a, a box available in the coming weeks. Uh, also, now you'll notice that your envelopes are available for our annual giving. Uh, if you would like to pick those up, they're on the tables on the outside, or just outside of the sanctuary. If your name is not listed there and you know, hey, I'm expecting to receive envelopes, there's a little list if you wouldn't just uh, go ahead and sign your names to that. Again, last week we identified the poinsettia order forms. That's available online, or if you want to just pick up a little slip of paper, those are due uh, next weekend. So that's coming right up. So thank you for participating in that. This week, Wednesday, we will have Thanksgiving Eve worship Wednesday, uh, November, uh, I'm sorry, the 25th at 7 o'clock p.m. No child care for that service, just so you know. Also, a week from today is Christmas decorating. So we're going to be putting up the uh, Christmas tree and the garlands and everything. That'll be Saturday, the 28th at 9 o'clock a.m., Again, we're going to keep safe distancing and wear masks, but we'd love to have you there if you could make it for that. On your way out, you will see the Christmas giving tree, the angel tree. And frankly, we have a number of kids, uh, some from, from some teachers in U46 and some other families, even our Good Shepherd family. Uh, you'll look at these tags, and they're very basic needs. These are families that have real needs. If you could participate that, you will be a blessing even again as we're asked to be a blessing to others because we have been so blessed. We'll need to return those gifts unwrapped by December 6th. So that's coming right up. So this Wednesday is uh, Thanksgiving Eve. A week from Wednesday is already midweek Advent worship. We'll be gathering uh, on the midweek Advents uh, beginning December 2nd at 7 p.m. for worship but we'll have a, a family uh, Advent activity at 6.15. That's a lot of stuff. Uh, show of hands, how many of you are getting the connections online, the electronic form? If you are not, just give the church a call, or actually even on your commitment form, that's a good opportunity just to update your address and emails. Believe it or not, if you don't intentionally tell us, hey, my email changed, we don't get those updated. So if you wouldn't mind, just go ahead and list those. Also, on your way out, 
we had something that I, it was an oversight for last week. We are trying to reach out to as many Good Shepherd families as we can. There's going to be prayer slips that you can pick up on your way out. And it's an opportunity for just to pray for the Smith family, uh, just to lift them up in prayers. And if you're so inclined, we'd encourage you to consider possibly just calling to see how they're doing or drop them a note. But if we could pray for them, that would be real, a real blessing. Uh, I would like to call forward back up again our executive director, uh, Dave uh, Poole. And he said he's just going to talk for a little bit. So let's just see if he can do that. All right. Thanks, Dave. thing I'd like to ask is, how come nobody last week that watched me on the live stream told me that I have no hair on the back of my head? Nobody told me this. I had to watch it myself, and I went, oh my goodness. So I guess I've been around a while. Um, just wanted to say thank you. Pastor alluded to the envelopes, uh, the commitment cards. The ministry here at Good Shepherd depends on your generous gifts, ours, yours, everyone's. God's ministry in this place requires a steady flow of income to provide outreach to our community, to care for our members and to maintain God's house. As we prepare to celebrate Thanksgiving, can we all just join in a simple prayer? And you don't have to repeat, but I'm gonna say it slowly just because I think it's kind of lists a few of the things that at least I think of. Dear God, please lead me on your path to joyously return a portion of my blessings to your ministry at Good Shepherd and throughout the world. You are the source of all good things and are at my side every day of my life. Thank you for your love. And I think if we all think that way, it makes it easy. So if you haven't had a card, please ask, call the office. If you have one and you're still thinking, it's great. We'll accept those all through the year. As I spoke last week, I mentioned a lot of the things we were able to do this year and how God has blessed us. Now we're looking forward. So hopefully we can all participate. And thank you for those that already have. I saw that's obviously started. Thank you so much, Dave. And again, as Dave mentioned, if you haven't yet received a commitment card, there's a number of them on the tables out front. And again, if you haven't been able to return yours yet, it's, it's an important thing for this ministry. Uh, we are the ministry as we respond to God's grace. And so thank you for your gracious support. And uh, just again, pray that you would be looking for Jesus working in your life and in the lives of others because he is out there. Let's go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please wait to be ushered out. <laughs>